Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we are going to be talking about Oklahoma quarterback Kyler Murray in terms of his production analytics. Uh, Kyler Murray, uh, the most buzzed about quarterback right now uh, in the football circles, has decided to declare for the NFL draft instead of uh, pursuing a career in, in uh, baseball. And because of that, we want to look at his data. Now, he has fantastic data. And if you're new to the channel and new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. So looking at his data, uh, he had a 97.32 career FBS score. And I'll get to the reason why it's this high in the very beginning. But Kyler Murray had one of the best statistical seasons in college football in uh, 2018. Uh, and pretty much hits the all-pro career threshold, the pro bowl career threshold, the starter career threshold. When you look at the average career FBS score uh, of 97.32, all-pro career average is 87.77, pro bowl is 72.26, and the starter is 70.76. So when you look at all this information, you go, okay, Kyler Murray has a very high chance of becoming an all-pro player, has a very high chance of becoming a pro bowl player, but here is the only sort of issue with Kyler Murray is that he is he only had one season of production and as I've mentioned in previous videos I mentioned it in uh, my video on Dwayne Haskins uh, from Ohio State there's only a handful of quarterbacks uh, since uh, 1969 uh, and even later than that 1956 even who have only started one year of college football and went on to become a highly successful quarterback um, some of those guys Cam Newton comes to mind uh, is definitely one of those uh, guys who kind of sticks out a lot. Uh, and there was another quarterback in the 70s. And, of course, people are going to mention Mitch Trubisky. The only problem with Mitch Trubisky, I would say, is that he's very recency biased because we, we don't know where Mitch Trubisky is going to be two years down the line, three years down the line, four, four years down the line to really say if he's going to become a long-term starter, um, regardless of how much success he had this year. Uh, but the bottom line is, based on the information we have right now, Colin Murray, very good production profile, but that one-year wonder itis is going to be the biggest sort of question mark of a guy like him. Um, a lot of people are going to bring up height and size and all these other sort of things. I've done the data. I've looked at all the information. Uh, based on the, the data work that I've done, you have pretty much the same, and I'm actually going to do a video on this in terms of quarterback height and the position, but you can find the same amount of long-term starters and high-quality quarterbacks uh, at every height range, meaning that every quarterback that was drafted in the NFL who was 6'1", or 5'11", or 6'5", even, or 6'2", if you look at all those heights individually, there are the same a number of quality, high-quality outcomes um, in terms of those percentages, if you will. So essentially, uh, if, if the, to make sense is that if there was 10 uh, six foot one or less quarterbacks drafted uh, since uh, say 2000, right? Uh, one out of those 10 ends up becoming a high quality NFL player. And if you look at all the quarterbacks who were six foot two or higher, uh, one out of 10 of all those quarterbacks, which there's a higher number of those quarterbacks like there's about a hundred uh six foot two to six foot five quarterbacks total compared to the six foot one or less quarterbacks who are only 10 but you still are only hitting on a 10 percent area so essentially out of that hundred six foot two to six foot five quarterbacks um only 10 make it to become high quality starters so I think the biggest reason why we view height as a big issue uh, in terms of projection or say, well, statistically, it's not that great. It's just because of population. I, I think if you look at the populations individually, you'll see that height isn't as much a decisive factor as much as just a personal preference of coaches. Coaches prefer taller quarterbacks. It's not that taller quarterbacks are better than shorter quarterbacks. It's just that they prefer taller quarterbacks and they've been drafting taller quarterbacks there's no real there's less starters that are six foot one or less uh when you look at the population individually um it's just really a personal preference but i'm going to do a video on this a little bit later in the year um to kind of especially with Kyler murray being in this draft class but don't let hype be a reason why 
you downgrade a guy like this because just like Russell Wilson, if you just looked purely at the production data of Russell Wilson, he would not and should not have been a third round pick. He should have been a first round pick that year. Bottom line, in fact, he was the top quarterback statistically speaking in the year that Russell Wilson was drafted based on all his data cumulatively. So again, you have to look at the the big thing about data is you have to look at everything collectively. You can't just look at one part and then go, well, that's the thing. You have to look at all of it collectively. And I think when you look at Colin Murray, there are definitely some issues with him from a collectiveness standpoint, but still good profile, great profile, fantastic profile even. Um, you'll just have to be able to figure out if, if this is a guy that's going to be able to break that one year mold. And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at DraftCoburn at WordPress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and, sub and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification bell in, in case you want to be reminded when another video of mine drops. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.